All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Epic Rides, the podcast, brought to you by Fisher Power Sports. My name is Noel Lindsay. I am a photographer and videographer and motorcycle addict, and I'm super excited to be starting this podcast, and I've got my buddy Dallas Mitchell here with me. Hey, how's it going today? Really good. Super excited to get this podcast thing started. Yes, yes, it's been in the works for a bit, so it's it's nice to finally actually... Uh to actually get it to this point <laughs> we've had a few false starts yeah i mean we did start this 45 minutes ago and we've been fighting with audio ever since but i think we've got it going now yeah we'll, we'll find out at the end <laughs> yeah exactly we'll see how this sounds and uh you all probably get to hear this because this might be the best we do at banter maybe <laughs> all right so What is Epic Rides, the podcast? We are going to try and cover everything moto camping. We're going to talk motorcycles. We're going to talk how to. We're going to give you tips. We're going to do reviews, all kind of fun stuff. And sort of the very first part of this is we're going to talk about Epic Rides Moto Tours, which was officially launched. We've got three tours planned right now. Uh, We're going to run each tour twice this summer. And they range from on road where we're going to head up north and we're going to check up some of northern Manitoba's greatest spots. And we're also going to head west into the park, not the parkland. What's it called? Uh, Central. Central Central area, right? Yeah. We are going to go through the central area because we're going to go through the Manitoba Narrows, but we're going to actually head west to uh, Duck Mountain Provincial Park. Ah, yeah. Super excited for that. There's going to be a bunch of gravel. There's going to be some single track. There's going to be lots of beautiful scenery. And the third tour, we're going to head to southeastern Manitoba, where we're going to do a bunch of off-roading. And all of these are going to be moto camping trips. And the whole goal is to get people out moto camping. I have a lot of experience camping. And Dallas, you don't have as much. No, no, not nearly as much. I'm not nearly the outdoors person that, that you are, but uh, I'm learning that. That's one of the, the fun things about being involved with the Epic Rides is, is learning the different outdoor stuff and, and the moto camping and same with just, you know, making the videos and, and whatnot, uh, being, you know, part of the chase crew. It, it's been been a lot of the 2022 was, was a was a fun season. Oh, it's, it totally was. So if you guys haven't checked out the YouTube channel yet, uh, there is an Epic Rides YouTube channel and we've done a ton of routes throughout the province. And as Dallas mentioned, uh, he's part of the chase crew and he's going to be one of uh, one of the chase crew on the Epic Rides Moto Tours as well. So I'm super excited to have Dallas and and fam involved. And, yeah, uh, the, the, the Mitchell the clan crew. has been a huge part of the tours. So uh, or excuse me, a huge part of the, the video series and it's going to be a huge part of the tours. Yeah, it's going to be fun. 2023 is going to be a ton of fun on doing these because we'll be a little bit more organized than, than we were this past year. So and then have if, uh, having uh, people join us, too, on those on those uh, tours. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, definitely more organized than we were because uh, there was a few times where I had pieces falling off my motorcycle due to who not thinking about the gravel roads and the conditions they were in or the tightness of my bolts. And, uh, yeah, there's just, uh, some missteps. We learned a bunch of stuff this, this year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, we've been friends for a bit. I think you, you, you got a crash course last year on how unprepared I, I can be at times, uh, particularly when it, when it comes to the outdoors and, uh, yeah, uh, I keep thanking you for keeping me alive while we were out camping. Uh, but it was so fun. We learned a few things though, for sure. Like, you know, proper footwear. Yes, yes, doing uh what was a three kilometer uh hike on a pretty intermediate trail uh in uh sandals and flip flops. Not a good not not a good plan. No, not ideal. But next in time fairness, we'll have we, shoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. In fairness, we were looking for a fishing spot, so we kind of just stumbled on the trail. So that that's a fun thing about uh the moto camping is that you can just call an audible and then once you're there start taking in the sites and the activities of uh, wherever we end up. Absolutely. And that hike is actually a feature of one of the tours because we had a lot of fun doing it. Yeah. 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 There's a couple of trails right there in the West Hawk there. That was, uh, that that'd be nice to to hit. Oh, for sure. And yeah, for those of you that don't want to walk a thousand kilometers, anything like we're not doing the Manterio trail, but uh, the one that we're talking is talking about is called the McGilvery uh, what is it? The McGilvery self-guided trail. 
Yeah. And so the long loop will actually take you up to the lake and the short loop just keeps you in the forest and on the, uh, on the Canadian shield. And it's a beautiful, beautiful hike. A lot of beautiful places to see there. I carried a fishing rod the entire time thinking that we were going to end up at a lake, which we never did. So I'm looking forward to ending up at the lake this time. Yes. Yeah. Hey, um, on another, on another trip, you guys went fishing. Uh, I had to sit that one out, but, uh, I know Cindy was raving about uh, the fish and uh, she learned how to prepare fish. She taught her how to do that. So uh, yeah, was, that was some a new skills. Trip. Yeah, that was awesome. We went up to uh, Nudimik. So for those of you unfamiliar where that is, that is in the Northern white shell and it's a great lake, great opportunity to catch fish. Uh, you can rent a boat for cheap and maybe that's something we'll look at on some of our future tours is, is maybe offering a boat rental piece for those of you that want to learn how to fish. Uh, fishing is one of my passions. I love it. I'm a avid fly fisherman and a, and a traditional tackle guy too. Really, at the end of the day, it's what catches fish, which is often nor- normal fishing gear and not so much fly fishing gear. Yeah. But that's a whole other podcast. We should do a fishing yeah. podcast. Yeah, we should. <laughs> yeah. We, how not to we, catch we, fish. We, yeah, I, I'm, I could teach a course on how not to catch fish. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, I don't think I've ever caught a fish. I've See, been fishing. We gotta get you out this year. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I don't eat fish though, so uh, I'll help catch them, and uh, I can even help prepare them. But uh, yeah, I won't be eating them. So we're gonna have to bring a we're gonna have to bring a special meal then if we do a fish fry. Yeah, you know what? I'll just bring some hot dogs and a stick, and then I'm good. <laughs> so while Camping. all of us on the tour are out eating uh, fresh fish shore lunch, Dallas is going to order pizza. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, they'll they'll <laughs> deliver to the middle of nowhere. We'll we'll do it when we do the uh, actual campground, but just on some crown land when we see if they'll find us. We'll just get, we'll we'll tell them the GPS coordinates, the the Google Map pin. I wonder if Pizza Pizza would drop it off. They might. Here, follow yeah, these possibly. GPS waypoints down the single track. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, I'm a terrible anyways. tipper, so so yeah, they'll be they won't be getting much of a tip. <laughs> no, well. Yeah. So at any rate, all that is to say we're doing moto tours, really excited to bring you guys out and uh, teach you some stuff about uh, moto camping, about fishing, hiking, uh, finding good routes and all that kind of fun stuff. So yeah, I'm super excited about all that. Oh, I guess I should tell people how to sign up for a tour. Yeah. Just throw out the website there. <laughs> so yeah, page so if you're up, interested in the ago. tours, we've got the descriptions up on the website, uh, as well as you can, uh, you can book your tour right there and it's epicridesmb.com. And, uh, we're really excited to have you guys out on the tour this year. So come on out, sign up. Excellent. It's going to be lots of a fun. great segue opportunity. We're doing moto camping. We're going to teach people how to moto camp, which kind of brings us to the first topic, why you should try moto camping. How's that for a segue? I like pivot. that. An epic pivot. Epic pivots. <laughs> epic segues. <laughs> That'll be the new show. We'll just change the topic constantly. Yep. Uh, yeah. Okay. So why you should try moto camping. So for all of you motorcyclists out there, you already know it's a visceral uh, experience. It feels like the ultimate freedom. You interact with the world and travel within it instead of being separated by two tons of metal. <clears throat> right. Camping is the same. You're sleeping in a tent. You're out in the outdoors. There's no escape from the elements. It's raw. It's natural. And it gives you a sense of being a part of the world instead of simply observing it. So. Bringing the two together really allows you to uh, feel a level of immersion that's that's like no other. Like, I, I just, I absolutely love it. Plus, it's a practical and cheap way to explore the planet. Like, compared to hotel rooms, camping is pennies on the dollar. Even, you know, established campgrounds. Even, it costs even less if you're camping on camp crown land. Uh, yeah, that that cost factor. I mean, we have a family of five, so to to travel and, and stay in a hotel, it it gets up there per night. So camping's oh, a sure, nice yeah, way. Yeah, up family affordability yeah and i mean you know if you're just wanting to get out and explore manitoba in particular has gorgeous summers uh despite the fact that we're paralyzed and slush it feels like for most of the year uh when summer does come it's spectacular and i just there's no sense in staying in a in a hotel in my mind uh it gives you lots of options too with moto camping you can either stay at a designated campsite like i mentioned uh or just dip off the trail as long as you're on crown land and you can just go set up for the evening and away you go 
And it adds a sense of adventure when you're carrying everything you need to survive and thrive on your bike, which is one of my favorite parts. I don't know why I like packing things and I like making lists. And uh, those are two things that you kind of need to do when you're moto camping, especially when you first start off. And then, yeah, being, pre- preparation sorry. is exce- preparation is exceedingly important when, uh, really, when you first start, because you don't want to be fumbling with with stuff and dealing with forgetting stuff. Yeah, forgetting stuff or even learning how to use the gear that you're bringing with you. It's you know you you make the list and oh I got the camp stove and then how do you use the camp stove? Better to figure it out in your backyard than it is to uh, figure it out on the side of the trail when it's maybe five degrees out and raining. Yeah, for sure. That's a that's other piece of motor camping that I mentioned earlier, but it's it, you really are out in the elements. But that's okay. It adds a sense of adventure. So you know, especially when you're carrying everything you need, like I said. So my first experience co- moto camping, uh, I've been a hardcore backcountry camper for years. So, you know, hiking mountains and pitching tents in the wilds of BC to canoe trips deep into the Manitoba and Ontario backcountry. I have a lot of experience with camping. So before I ever threw a leg over a motorcycle, I kind of already had that piece. And uh, when I started riding and going on longer and longer tours, it was a natural fit for me to want to carry my camping gear with me and find new and exciting spots to camp. Uh, it was a natural fit. One of the hardest things to get used to when you first start moto camping is doing without every luxury. Again, I was used to that from backcountry camping, uh, but there's no AC, no heater, no TV. And in many parts of Manitoba, surprisingly, there is still no cell service. So you can, and not far from the city either, as, uh, as I've discovered over the years, I've been mean, really two and a half hours from the city and there's zero cell service. It feels pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah. Our infrastructure is not the greatest out here. I mean, you can be in the city and still not have a, have a cell signal i find yes that's true okay so the flip side of of moto camping like i would mentioned the you know no tv and getting used to the no tech and the sort of lack of luxury um is that the fresh air and the work involved in the riding you know all day on the bike then setting up camp doing camp chores like chopping and cutting wood preparing a meal etc it has you ready to turn in much earlier than home and it's so nice to be lying on in the tent listening to nature all around you and it's just amazing and then one of my favorite activities to do while moto camping is to bring along a collapsible fishing pole. As I mentioned earlier, I love fishing. So, you know, I, I'll, I'll bring a little collapsible fixed fishing pole with me, see if I can't catch dinner if I'm parked by a lake. Obviously, that's a, that's a huge piece. If I'm going down to Sandy Lands, which is essentially a pine desert, there is not so much a place to fish. So I won't bring my fishing rod there. But up in southern or in, excuse me, eastern Manitoba, I will definitely bring my fishing gear. Because there's all kinds of opportunities to catch fresh fish and and doing a little fish fry at the campfire is one of my favorite things to do. So I'll bring that stuff. And then, of course, the biggest reason why I think you should try mode and camping is that it extends the ride. It forces you to slow down and be deliberate and it gives you ample time to be alone with your thoughts. And I love that. I love I love going for multiple days on the bike. It's There's just something so freeing about pulling away from the house, everything you need to live is on your bike, on your, in your, in your saddlebags or in your duffel on the back. And, you know, the most important thing to remember too, is that it doesn't matter what kind of bike you've got. You can, you just need to go to explore the best moto camping bike is the bike you own right now. I'm not talking about spending a million dollars on gear, going and sell your bike for the latest and greatest ADV bike. I don't care if you're a Harley rider, you can still experience moto camping. You just might not want to do the single track because yeah, your suspension won't like it as much. And therefore, neither will your back. That's what I got for why you should try moto camping. Anything, mm-hmm. anything I missed? Anything we should add? I think that pretty that. Yeah, that covers it, I think. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else we need to say there other than you should get out there and try it. It's a good time. And this podcast, we're going to spend a lot of time talking moto camping. And I'm going to get down and drill down into the nitty gritties of gear and, you know, different techniques, different tips and all that kind of stuff in future episodes. This one, this is being the very first episode was very much about why I think you should try it. And then we'll talk about how to make it more comfortable for you in future episodes. So a reason to for our listeners to stick around. Okay, so all I've, th- I've said all I can about why I think you should go moto camping. And here is my pivot. Let's talk about a gear review that will save you some money and uh, get you into the bags you need at least to start moto camping. Not a bad segue. Yeah, Yeah. that works. It works. It'll work. It'll work for work for us. 
the very first review we're going to do here is on a set of saddlebags and duffel bag uh, by a brand called Wild Heart. It's an Amazon brand. I don't know who makes them. I'm assuming child labor is definitely involved. Um, I know that they're waterproof and I know that they're way better quality than I expected. So the the saddlebags or the panniers, they're 25 liters each. They are IP6 waterproof and they're made out of a really tough like dry bag material. Uh, and they're amazing. They hold a lot of gear. They hold a lot of weight. And the best part of them is it costs almost less than a quarter of what a set of brand name bags would cost for the same quality, which blew my mind. Like yeah, that's the, a good deal. Yeah, it's crazy. The 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 panniers were like one hundred and sixty nine dollars. Um, and to put that into perspective, I think the nearest set of soft saddlebags that I've seen on uh, on and on, on any of the motorcycle specific websites, you're looking at four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars. Oh wow, six hundred dollars. And then if you're looking at hard hard bags or hard saddle bags like the BMW branded ones, they're like two thousand dollars, which is insane. Oh wow. Wow. Like my, my current bike isn't worth that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the panniers you're, you're using this year. Um, I mean, you put them through their paces, like use them a lot and in a lot of rough terrain, like, and yeah, you're, you're not abusive with your equipment, but you don't, you don't coddle it. Like you use your, you use your gear. So that's, Absolutely. that's a, that's a good price. The 169 considering. So four to four to six hundred dollars is what you've been seeing for other like soft bags. That's not the hard. That's right. That's soft bags. Okay. So like you know, uh-huh. giant loop. They've they've got this great big. It looks like a giant horseshoe. I think it's called the coyote or something like that. It's mm-hmm. a sweet like it's a sweet piece of luggage. But you're looking at eight hundred dollars. Oh wow! Uh, and so with with the duffel bag, you're still under three hundred bucks. Yeah, three hundred fifty bucks. So. You know, you're and you're holding as as much stuff, and it comes in two colors. You can get you know bright, ridiculous banana yellow, which is what I chose for high visibility. And because I am a simple man, and bright, colorful things make me happy, you can also buy them in black. <laughs> if you are a normal human being that doesn't want to stand out like a sore thumb, so you know yeah, the, the going amazing. with the visibility, I think, is a good idea. Just because I mean, I've seen how people drive on the road, so I think you want them to see you. Yeah, definitely. The the being seen piece is pretty big, especially because if you look at like a lot of motorcycle gear, it's all it, it, a lot of it's very like black and earth tones. And, you know, it, it makes it a little bit harder to see, especially if you've got a tree backdrop or something like that. If you're rolling down the highway, um, it can yeah, it can be challenging for motorists to see you. So having that bright yellow sort of sticks out a little bit and makes you a little bit more visible, which I really like. And like I said, you know, most importantly to me, I saw it as like, ooh, pretty colors. So that's why I got it. <laughs> <laughs> safety, safety second. Yeah. Yeah. Entertainment first, safety second. That's right. And this is the part of the pod pa- podcast that I'm going to say, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> I am not a professional. <laughs> I do not want any liabilities coming back at me. Please don't sue me if you get smushed by a car because you chose a black bag. Or more importantly, or if you bought the yellow bag and still get hit by a car. It's not my fault. Remember, it's all about the pretty colors. And definitely don't sue if uh, you buy the yellow bags and I run you over in the chase van. That's right. Yeah, super don't sue us. I think that's all I got to say about those bags. They're great. They're waterproof. They're strong. They're abrasion resistant. I've dropped the bike with the bags on and at speed, like not at highway speeds, but, you know, on trails and that. And they've held up great. Unlike my brand name hard bags that I started the year with. I had, uh, and again, not the bag's fault. The, they, they're great bags. I had the, these Givy hard bags that came with the bike. <sighs> what were they? 25 liters each as well. I think it might have been 30 liters. Uh, nice hard saddle bags. And the first time I had a pretty significant fall, I snapped one off and, and permanently busted it. And to replace those ones is almost a thousand bucks. So obviously I didn't replace them for that cost. Plus, I do a lot of off-road riding, and I would argue that soft bags are far superior for off-road than hard bags, simply because if you need to put a foot down, it's really easy to get your foot caught on the on the hard bag. And I experienced that. I, I almost had my foot trapped under the bag. Uh, however, the bag broke, and because I was airborne, I managed to free myself. <laughs> yeah, but, episode five. 
there's a lot of lower leg injuries that get caused by people pinching their leg under hard bags. So in my mind, a soft bag is a better way to go anyways. Yeah. Which is kind of a good pivot here to talk about our safety share for the week, which is <laughs> ride within your skill set. This is a big one. This is one where our tours, this is this is something that I really want to focus on because the tours that we're going to be offering this year aren't always on the nicest roads. Manitoba doesn't have the nicest roads. We have almost zero road infrastructure due to the most crooked government I've ever seen in my life. Okay, that's maybe an exaggeration, but the highways departments blew all their money on cocaine instead of actually putting on new road services. So I have almost nothing nice to say other than there's potholes, there's bumps, there's frost heaves, there's cracks, there's tar snakes. And that's on our nice roads, like our Trans Canada Highway for <laughs> bleep's sake. You know? Yeah. Uh, so. And we're not going to be just on those roads. We're going to be on a lot of gravel, uh, you know, heading into Duck Mountain Provincial Park. That's almost 55 kilometers of gravel just to get to the campground. But we're going to be in a lot of gravel riding around there. That isn't to say that if you don't have a ton of gravel experience, you shouldn't join the tour. But, you know, ride within your skill set. So we're going to have, you know, Dallas and co uh, as a chase van. They're going to be going a little bit slower. They're going to be making sure that nobody's left behind. You don't need to race. It's never going to be a race. Uh, in fact, I just bought a current my I just bought a brand new motorcycle that I'm super excited about. I got a 2022 Kawasaki KLR 650, which if you know motorcycles, you know, is a donkey, not a cheetah. So. <laughs> our top speeds are not exactly going to be blistering to begin with, but we, we will be making sure that we have people uh, sweeping and, and going for people that are just uncomfortable. If you've got a road bike, you can still do it, but you got to ride within your skill set. You got to get used to a couple things. Bike's going to slide around underneath you a little bit. You have to kind of know how to handle that already. Um, I can explain it, but without you actually doing it yourself until you feel it for the first time, you're just not going to, you're just not going to know what I'm talking about when I'm saying the bike moves around and gets squirrely. So riding with your skill set is super important and not just for the tours, but just in, in general, right? Like sometimes I see some pretty technical looking single track that I really want to try, but knowing my level as an off-road rider, I am by no means uh, Lyndon and Poskett, uh, and I'm not doing any uh, Dakar rallies. I'm also a middle-aged fat man. So that means my athleticism is not at the Lyndon Poskett levels. Because I know that, I am not going to attempt some of the crazier trails without building my experience through a off-road training program of some sort uh, where I can get professionals to teach me what to do. So I try and keep my skill set in mind before I head out. And that's I think that's super important, even on the road, right? Like if you've got a big, you know, a great big GSXR 1000 or something race bike, ride within your skill set. Don't ride to what the bleeding edge of what the bike can handle because that's a surefire way to end up dead. Yeah, you're out for a good time, right? Um, there, there are safer places to try to race and stuff if, if speed's your thing. So uh, yeah, definitely getting to where you're going is number one, particularly like on in Manitoba, like our secondary roads are just, just garbage. And then, yeah, we've never driven a, a motorcycle before. So just seeing you on the gravel and you can physically see the, the wobble on the, of the bike uh where it's sliding a little bit on on the gravel and I'm like Ugh. so glad i was in the van <laughs> once you get used to it it's kind of fun it's it's you know sliding the back tire around a little bit is good times and uh you know if, as long as you keep a nice loose grip on the bars and let that bike wiggle around i know that this isn't actually going to be a video but i'm moving my hands around wobbling <laughs> I'm pretending to wobble my hands around yeah, that's good uh, it, yeah it basically i think it boils down to there's sort of two kinds of motorcyclists there are old motorcyclists and there are bold motorcyclists there are no old bold motorcyclists fair enough so i i think that that's a, a pretty good way to to view it i mean it's hard not to want to crack the throttle as hard as you can sometimes and it's, it's hard not to want to see how much air you can get off that berm but uh, for the tours, especially, but for all of you out there riding, ride, try and ride with your skill set. If you've never rid on single track before, take it slow and easy and ask for help. If there's uh, if you got a buddy that's better at it than you follow his line or her line. So there we go. Shape safety, share ride within your skill set. I think that's all I got to say about that. And yep. really that's all I got to say today. I think we covered everything. We talked about why I think you should start moto camping. Uh, we talked about 
the tours. We did a review. Anything else we need to cover? I think we're good on this on this one. Awesome. What are we going to talk about next week? Next week, we're going to talk about what gets us excited about the upcoming season. So that's 2023. We're going to talk all things uh, exciting or what's what's getting me excited for the riding season. What's getting Dallas excited for the riding season, the tours, all that kind of fun stuff. We are going to talk about the basics of trouble free moto camping and uh, we're going to have another safety share. Excellent. So that'll be next week. Uh, Don't forget to check us out. We do have the YouTube channel, which started this whole thing. Uh, we've got what 19 episodes up there or some somewhere in there. Yeah, 1920, some, some yeah. something like that. So lots of good stuff to check out. Check out some local Manitoba routes. Uh easy to find on YouTube. It's just at Epic Rides MB. Find us on social media. Also on uh on social media, we're at Epic Rides MB, and that's on Instagram, TikTok, and of course Facebook. And finally, our website, epicridesmb.com. So lots of ways to lots of ways to get a hold of us and uh, to check out some great content and uh, just be part of the community. And that's really at the end of the day, what I want to do is build community amongst riders. So join the community, join the fun, join the family. And until next week, but keep your stick on the ice. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good enough. We're calling, we're calling it there. Goodbye, everybody. Talk to you later. See you next week.